Okay, so we move on to question two, um, and it's rate of reaction. So this is always going to come up. So hydrogen reacts with uh, nitrogen monoxide, as shown below, and they give me the rate equation for this, um, and the concentration of nitrogen monoxide is changed, and the rate concentration graph is plotted. So the concentration of nitrogen monoxide is along this axis, and the rate, the initial rate, is plotted along this axis here. <coughs> Just be careful, <coughs> this is all times 10 to the minus 4 going on here. The chemist uh, uses that concentration um, of hydrogen. Using values for the graph, calculate the rate constant, K, for this reaction. So, um, to calculate K, I need to know the rate. I've got the concentration of hydrogen, so I just need the concentration of nitrogen monoxide at that rate. So to make things easy, um, I'm gonna choose this one. So this concentration of nitrogen monoxide here, which is five times 10 to the minus four, and that gives me a rate here of 4.2 times 10 to the minus four. So let's bung those values into the equation. So first we have to rearrange it. So K is equal to the rate divided by the concentration of H2 times the concentration of NO squared. You bung your numbers in that you've got from the graph. So that's 4.2 times 10 to the minus four divided by 2 times 10 to the minus 2, which I got from there. Uh, 5 times 10 to the minus 4, which I got from my graph, and that one is, of course, squared. If you do that, I'm going to do that over here. Um, what I would do is, up to you, is I actually do work it out uh, the bottom. Oh, let's sort that out. Whee! Um, I sort these values out first, so I'll work that one out there. It just, just in case you have a slip up on your calculator, um, it means the examiner can see what you've done. So that comes out like so, and if you do that, it wants it to two significant figures. <coughs> um, so that comes to 84,000, so that's 8.4 times 10 to the four. Now units wise, it's reminded me, wants me units. Um, rate, of course, is in moles per decimeter cubed per second. These are all concentration values in moles per decimeter cubed. And if there's three of them, so that's cubed. So one of those will uh, cancel down there, like so. So if you take that up, it's going to be moles to the minus two. Um, okay, I'm gonna do my units now. Um, so for units, rate of course is in moles per decimeter cubed per second. And then I've got the concentration terms all in moles per decimeter cubed, and that's cubed. That's going to cancel with that. So if you swap it up, it's going to be moles to the minus two decimeters uh, to the six seconds to the minus one. You can rearrange that if you like, it's up to you. Um, and by that I mean you can uh, put decimeters to the six moles to the minus two seconds to the minus one. If that's, that's it, like, but you don't have to. Okay, so part B, um, a chemist is investigating the effect of changing the concentration of hydrogen on this rate at two different temperatures. Um, the reaction is first order with respect to H2. Sketch two graphs for the result, L for the lower temperature, H for the higher temperature. Well, it's first order is gonna be a straight line and obviously the higher temperature will have a higher rate. So making a start at zero, zero, straight line like that for L and then a steeper line for H like so. What would be the effect of the higher temperature on the rate constant? Well, obviously the rate constant will be higher at the higher temperature because the rate is. 
So the rate constant increases. Okay, carrying on then. <coughs> the reaction can also be shown as being first with respect to H2 by the continuous monitoring of concentration of H2 during the constant reaction. Using the X-flow sketch a graph to show the results and state how you reduce this graph to show its first order. Okay, so its first order in point concentration is going to have a constant half-life. So you need a nice curve um, going down like so. So nice smooth curve. And then how would you use it? You would see a constant half-life for a first order reaction. Okay, so now we've got to put this all together um, and get a mechanism for this reaction. So we've got the overall equation up there and we've got a proposed mechanism and they want the equation for step three. So we've got to make sure we use everything up. So here I've got my 2NO, so that's okay, but I've only used 1H2 here. So I've got to have H2. Um, that's okay, that gets removed. I make N2O2 there, but it uses there. I make N2O there. So I've got to get rid of that N2, sorry, not N2, N2O there, haven't I? Because I formed it, but it doesn't form as part of the reaction. So plus N2O to get rid of that. Um, I've only made one water so far. So I've got to make another water. And I've also got to make N2 as well, because I haven't made any N2. And hopefully that all works out. Okay, so I'm now looking at um, why is this explaining this mechanism? Why is it consistent with that uh, rate equation? Well, let's have a look. In my, um, I've got to get my slow step is here in step two. Um, and to get to step two, um, step two is my slow step, it involves H2, 1H2, so that's good because there's 1H2 here, and also 2NO, um, and the 2NO have formed this guy here, N2O2. So it is consistent with that rate equation because it involves 1H2 molecule and an N2O2 molecule which has been produced by 2NO molecules here.